if only you could discern the thoughts of others. Even though they may appear to be hidden, how would you feel? If you listen carefully and keep an open mind, you can easily understand them. You are skilled at estimating other people's emotions. In this video, we explore nine methods for reading people's minds that are based on Musashi's wisdom. Step one, amidst the cacophonous din of daily existence. Listen carefully to what people say and don't say. Speaking can resemble a dance of words, with more hiding than revealing. Musashi advises us to pay close attention to how people speak. It goes beyond just hearing words. It's all about paying attention. Take note of when someone pauses, stops speaking, or uses precise word choice. Recognize that silence can convey a lot, and sometimes the most significant details are lost. In the spaces between sentences, in the practice of discourse, subtle cues can reveal people's secrets, desires, and fears. Musashi was an expert at the tides of battle. In order to fully comprehend the essence of a person in the world of understanding others, we must learn to navigate the currents of dialogue and interpret the unsaid. Listening with our hearts as well as our ears is the first step. It's similar to hearing someone tell you a story and experiencing the emotions that go along with the words. It's not just about the words people use when we listen carefully to what they have to say. The key is to capture the emotions and encapsulate them in those words. Think of it like a code. Even though people may not always express exactly what's on their minds, their perspective can often give a lot away. Take note of the times when someone pauses or hesitates to speak. There are hidden messages in those pauses. We can decipher their words deeper meaning if we listen closely. It involves more than just listening. Well, it involves learning to be an emotional investigator. People may divulge their secrets, fears, or dreams. Wise warrior, Miyamoto Musashi, recognize the value of listening carefully in your next conversation, not just to the obvious, but also to the murmurs between the words. If we can decipher the unspoken language hidden within their sentences, focused on the emotions that underlie the words as well as the words themselves. It's similar to discovering a hidden treasure. By taking this action, we begin the process of comprehending the complex mental terrain of another person. Step two, observe their movements and mannerisms. We must watch the facial expressions and body language of people around us, just as Musashi did when he was in the heat of battle. Studying the movements of his opponents, the body has its own language, expressing intentions and feelings that words might not be able to express. Even the smallest change in posture, a furrowed brow or a nervous tick can reveal a lot of information. The lessons of Musashi urge us to be perceptive and pay attention to the hidden meanings that are expressed through gestures. We can tell if someone is confident, hesitant, relaxed, or agitated by observing these bodily cues. Our bodies speak a language all their own. They have a hidden code that expresses our emotions. This non-verbal body language is influenced by hand gestures facial expressions, and body movements. Consider viewing a movie without audio. To understand the story, you rely on the actor's facial expressions and body language, correct? The same holds true for individuals. Sometimes, before they say a word, their bodies speak volumes. Let's use body language to play detective. Take note of whether someone slouches with uncertainty or stands tall and confident. When they talk about something they love, Notice how their face lights up. And when they talk about something difficult, notice how their shoulders may droop. Not only was Miyamoto Musashi, the legendary warrior, a master with a sword, he was very good at reading the movements of his opponents. Similar to this, we can reveal hidden feelings and ideas beneath the surface by observing how people move and express themselves the capacity to see past words 
and understand the unspoken messages our bodies are trying to tell is like having superpowers. Keep an eye out for spoken words during your next conversation, but also for the emotional dance that is conveyed through gestures and body language. It's a distinct method of listening that advances our understanding of the mysteries of the mind. Step three, consider their background and experiences. To be able to read minds truly, one needs to take a trip back in time. Musashi, a man molded by his own experiences, invites us to think about the beginnings of those we try to comprehend by compassionately exploring their past. We open the door to their current mental state. We can better appreciate the context of their thoughts and actions when we are aware of the struggles they endured. Musashi had a tough life of his own, and we can only fully appreciate the genius of his mind when we understand the crucible of his experiences. Consider each person as a character in a larger narrative. We need to know their beginnings and their adventures in order to comprehend the plot. As Miyamoto Musashi, the wise warrior, advises, we ought to learn more about the pasts of those who surround us. Everybody has a unique story that is molded by their successes and challenges. Like that of Musashi. Where were they raised? What experiences have they had? Considering these aspects of their life story enables us to make the necessary connections. Think of it as putting together a puzzle. The picture gets clearer the more pieces we have. Understanding someone's past enables us to understand them in the present. Their actions today may be influenced by their past experiences. His mentality was shaped by battles, just like Musashi's. Thus, let us tell tales of the human condition. Don't just observe someone you meet for the first time. Think back to the chapters that brought them to this point. It's similar to opening a book and learning about the experiences and hardships that shaped the person. By learning about their background and experiences, we get a greater understanding of the complex tales that each individual carries. It's a historical voyage that advances our comprehension of the intricacy and beauty of their minds. Step four. Attempt to comprehend and relate to their emotions. Compassion. In his quest for understanding, Musashi espouses the idea of constructing a bridge between hearts and minds. It is more than just an intellectual endeavor to read someone's mind. An emotional bond is necessary. Put yourself in their position. Take in the beat of their feelings and use compassion as a compass to help you understand them. Even though he was known for being a fierce warrior, Musashi had empathy. His unmatched success on the battlefield was a result of his ability to understand the hopes and fears of his opponents. Empathy training enables us to connect with the emotional symphony of people around us in day-to-day -day interactions, opening the doors to their inner minds. The sage warrior Miyamoto Musashi held that you have to delve into someone's ocean of emotions in order to fully comprehend them. It's similar to taking a stroll while wearing their emotional shoes. If you could sense another person's emotions, how would that be? You can tell when they're happy by the warmth. You sense the weight if they are depressed. Empathy is that. Furthermore, it's a superpower that mends hearts. Musashi was more than just a proficient swordsman. He was an expert at reading the emotions of his adversaries. We can apply this strategy in our regular conflicts. Keep an eye out for telltale signs, such as a glimmer in their eyes when discussing a subject they are passionate about, or a heavy tone in their voice. When confronting a difficult situation, building a bridge between two hearts is what happens when we attempt to comprehend and share another person's feelings. It says, hey, although I have not been in your position, I'm currently experiencing the emotions you are. We all want to be understood at our core. So it's a potent way to connect. Consider their possible feelings for a moment. The next time you are with them, it's not important to know every solution. It's important to convey to them that their feelings are important. In the great story of human connection, 
Empathy turns into the magical thread that unites us and enriches our mental voyages through one another. Step 5. Take into account their friends' opinions of them. We have to look to the company, just as Musashi formed alliances and studied his opponents. One never stops attempting to understand the core of a person. Friends often serve as mirrors for a person, reflecting their beliefs, strengths, and weaknesses. Beyond the sword, Musashi's strategic intelligence encompassed a deep comprehension of interpersonal dynamics. People's bonds can reveal a lot about them to us. Similar to Miyamoto Musashi, who recognized the benefits of coalitions despite being relatively solitary. Being an adventurer is similar to discovering the treasures found in friendship. A person's choice of friends can reveal a lot about them, just as Musashi's choice of allies revealed his character. Friends serve as people's best reflections, acting as mirrors, just as Musashi's allies had much to say about him. So too can one learn a lot about a person's life's great adventure from the people they surround themselves with. Understanding our friends helps us unlock the secrets of our main character, the person we're trying to understand. Friendships form a team. How then do we solve this portion of the puzzle? It's similar to watching a sports team compete. Observe the dynamics. Is there conflict between them? Or are they helping one another? Despite his reputation as a lone warrior, Musashi understood the value of friendship. It's like a treasure map in our quest to find out what friends think of someone. Friends are aware of our main character's weaknesses, strengths, and eccentricities. Strengths and eccentricities. Make a mental note of the friends of anyone you meet. Friends are similar to ancillary characters in a person's narrative, and we get closer to seeing the big picture by comprehending these relationships. It's like getting access to the backstage area of their own play, opening a new door to the mysteries of their psyche. Step six, take note of their appearance and demeanor Similar to how a warrior's armor discloses a great deal about their identity, a person's appearance conveys a lot about them. It is understood that Musashi is a master of self, control, and mindfulness. The importance of look. What someone wears and how they present themselves. These are the outward manifestations of inner stories. Make a note of the specifics. Is the clothing well chosen? Or do they prioritize comfort over fashion? Do they have a confident or reserved stance? The lessons of Musashi teach us to value the outward expressions of a person's mentality. Clothes and attitude are like threads in a tapestry of human expression, telling a tale that is just waiting to be unraveled. Consider clothing as a form of communication that conveys a narrative about the wearer. Miyamoto Musashi compares it to how a warrior's armor can reveal a great deal about them. Let's examine the hidden messages in people's wardrobes by acting as fashion detectives. Like a visual cue, a person's style can reveal a great deal about their personality, including their tastes, emotions, and occasionally even their line of work. Musashi would have recognized the significance of these visual cues given his strategic mindset. Consider perusing a book devoid of words. Someone's attire serves as akin to the front cover of their narrative. Is it bright and colorful, or is it more muted and useful? Every decision they make is a brushstroke used to paint a picture of who they are. Seeing someone's appearance and mannerisms is like getting a glimpse into their world of self-expression. Are they self-assured, laid back, or somewhat quirky? Just as Musashi's stance during a duel disclosed his mental state, one can infer a person's attitude toward life from the way they carry themselves. Let's examine the language of fashion. When you encounter someone new, pause to notice the little things, the accessories, patterns, and colors. It resembles reading a wordless chapter from their autobiography. By doing this, we get a better understanding of the individual mental canvas that they have drawn with their own distinctive style. Step seven, 
set aside your personal assessments and opinions. Musashi's insight extends beyond the battlefield and into the domains of development and comprehension on a personal level. An uncluttered canvas, free from bias and preconception, is necessary to read someone's mind. Musashi would have a clear head before engaging in combat. Every interaction needs to be approached without the burden of our personal prejudices. The human mind is a complicated place, and by taking on Musashi's objectivity, we risk obscuring the clarity we seek. We can gain a deeper understanding of others by letting go of our preconceived notions and allowing their thoughts to unfold organically. Envision a backpack brimming with your opinions and thoughts. Miyamoto Musashi advises setting aside your backpack when attempting to comprehend someone. Our perspectives are shaped by our opinions, which function as glasses. Similar to how Musashi remained flexible in combat, we also need to be adaptable in the way we view other people. Opinions can sometimes serve as filters, causing us to see the world through a particular lens. However, what if this is not the whole story? It is comparable to viewing a painting. You risk missing the exquisite details on the remaining portion of the canvas if you concentrate solely on one corner. Let's honor those who have an appreciation for art. Putting judgments aside is similar to cleaning a foggy glass so you can see someone clearly. Swordmaster Miyamoto Musashi had unclouded understanding. He was aware that preconceived notions and conclusions can impede our ability to see and comprehend things clearly, much like heavy armor. How can we go about doing this? It's about holding off on making judgments. Let's rewind a bit. It's not about giving up on our ideas. It's about giving other people's ideas space rather than issuing a litany of condemnations. Consider engaging in dialogue with a new acquaintance. Ask questions, listen intently, keep an open mind, and allow the person in front of you to reveal themselves. It's similar to starting a new book and not knowing how it will end, an experience and comprehension that leads to a wider viewpoint. Let's embrace the idea of seeing without bias. Set aside your collection of preconceived notions and allow the world to unfold in all of its hues. We put ourselves in the position of understanding by doing this, transforming the mental voyage through someone else into an intriguing investigation as opposed to a preset course of action. Step eight, apply reason to comprehend their ideas. The Book of the Five Rings, a well-known work by Musashi places a strong emphasis on strategy and reason. This becomes a guiding principle in our quest to read minds. Apply reason to the analysis of the data obtained from observation and empathy. Similar to how Musashi dissected his rival's strategies, logical thought enables us to make connections, spot trends, and reach wise judgments. Spot trends and reach wise judgments. Musashi was a brilliant strategist because he could quickly and decisively assemble information. By taking a similar approach, we can purposefully and clearly make our way through the maze of someone else's thoughts. Understanding someone else's thoughts is akin to piecing together a puzzle. Our dependable guide, logical thinking aids in making connections and enables us to see the wider picture Think of it like being a mystery novel detective. Clues can be found in words, deeds, and facial expressions, and it's our responsibility to logically put them together. This method of deciphering the workings of the human mind would be greatly appreciated by Musashi, who had a strategic mind. Consider it as the construction of an understanding bridge. Every bit of knowledge is like a strong beam and logical reasoning enables us to make sense, based connections between them. When someone talks about being depressed, but is always smiling, we apply logic to investigate possible explanations for the discrepancy. Miyamoto Musashi, renowned for his strategic acumen, 
frequently approached problems with a rational and unambiguous mindset. We walk in his footsteps in trying to understand others. Overcomplicating things is not the goal of logical thinking. It involves breaking down complex ideas into simpler ones and looking for patterns that may be hidden from view. Next time you wish to decipher someone's thoughts, approach it like you would a mystery to solve. Gather information, pose inquiries, and apply logic to make sense of it all. It's similar to unlocking a door to a secret mental chamber, and we get closer to comprehending the intricate mental map of another person with each logical step. Step 9. Pose direct questions to them. Clear communication cuts through ambiguity like a sharp sword. Imagine the unassuming warrior Miyamoto Musashi nodding in agreement. For understanding others depends on direct communication. Just like in a war, let's talk about the effectiveness of direct and concise questioning. This is the kind of strategy that the wise warrior Musashi would have appreciated because open and honest communication is essential in both conversations and battles. Consider it as an interviewer looking for pertinent details. Direct questioning brings clarity and enables us to see things as they actually are. Much like turning on a spotlight in a dark room, Musashi would approve of this straightforward approach because he valued strategy clarity. So how can we master the art of asking direct questions? It's all about having a child, like curiosity and exploring the world. There's no better way to find out what someone is thinking or feeling than to ask them directly. Go directly to the point of contention rather than circling the issue. Think of it like unlatching a treasure chest. You're more likely to unearth someone's hidden gems their dreams, fears, or favorite flavor of ice cream. If you ask them clear, concise questions, just ask Musashi if this directness would be appreciated. Musashi valued efficiency in his duels. Naturally, being direct in your questioning does not imply insensitivity. It's about making an environment conducive to candid and open communication. When you get to the heart of the matter and cut through the clutter, people frequently appreciate it. Thus, Embrace your curiosity. Don't be afraid to ask the next time you're interested in knowing someone's feelings or thoughts. It is comparable to turning on a light in a poorly lit space. We open the door to understanding and encourage others to share the gems they've kept hidden in their minds. By posing direct questions, the renowned swordsman and philosopher, Miyamoto Musashi, leaves us a legacy of wisdom that cuts over time and cultural boundaries. His teachings are a compass that helps us navigate the complex terrain of human interaction in our quest to read anyone's mind. We can open the doors to understanding by being aware of both spoken and unspoken cues, observing body language, taking into account personal histories, and embracing empathy. We must approach the arena of human connection with the same clarity and focus that Musashi brought to every duel. Set aside your biases, accept reason, and if necessary, wield the sword of direct questioning. In the spirit of Musashi, let us approach understanding with self-control, empathy, and a resolute commitment to unraveling the mysteries of the mind. May Miyamoto Musashi's teachings motivate us to discover the deep wisdom that each and every human being possesses, enabling us to become not only adepts of the outside world, but also kind and understanding explorers of the inside world.